Gotham episode 20 under the knife. I was surprised to see that this was actually like a part two to a three part thing with the ogre. I thought that this would actually get wrapped up kind of how they've done with pretty much every other villain in the series. But it was kind of cool that they're for the you know last couple episodes this season they're focusing on one really hard to catch villain and then there are a lot of other you know random things going on on the side all of which have actually been pretty awesome like if like either you know this story has something crazy happen or this story has something really big happen and last time it was Bruce's story where he and Selena are going out on this mission trying to get information about um who on the board was trying to kill him and you know take the information from his house and of course by the end of that they end up killing Alfred's friend and so in this episode I for me at least the really big thing that happened was actually um, the Penguin storyline because Maroney comes to the club and he basically puts it all out there in front of Penguin's mom and he tells her everything that's happened. He tells, him, tells her about you know the murders and how he's not just some simple you know businessman club owner. He's a murderer. He's a, you know he calls him a psychopath and he tells her everything and it kind of destroys her and I thought that was just very surprising and of course it pushes Penguin up to a brand new level and it was really fun like he you know lies to his mother at the end and I'm pretty sure she knew he was lying because she's you know it seemed like she was holding back the tears and she was just like you know I'm tired now so she goes to sleep and of course he's super pissed because of course the guy he wanted to hire to help kill off Maroney told Maroney and um or maybe it's not maybe that's not what happened I guess he he did just randomly show up but you know he's like you know he kills like the flower delivery guy and stuff and he's he's mad like he's really mad he does have this other guy who you know kind of wants to get above Victor's as it's like the number one hitman so he's gonna potentially help out I mean he said he would but you never really know like fear could come me yeah, at the last second he's like you know what this isn't a bad this isn't really a good idea so we don't really know if that's gonna play out too well for penguin i mean we know penguin becomes penguin but for this series it doesn't mean it's gonna happen right now that he's gonna take that next big step by the end of the season but it's definitely going somewhere and i think it was one of the biggest parts um maybe not the biggest part but it was definitely my second like the second favorite craziest moment in this episode uh number one would definitely have to be the Riddler finally having his first kill and I knew that this storyline was going to pay off at some point I was actually surprised that it even happened in this season but I knew that his story was going to be that he fell for this woman uh, Miss Kringle and that somehow that would play out I thought that she, he would eventually you know kind of take the step to ask her out and she would kind of say no to him or something and that's where he when he would lose it but I think in this case it's actually better it's you know he has the feelings for her still and he sees that she's physically being hurt by someone she cares about so it's like you know he, he's not gonna let this cop hurt her and I love that he's like waiting in front of the apartment for the guy and he sees him and he's like hold it right there Buster I thought that was such a funny line from him and you know the guy punches him and then he stabs him and they have like you know the whole setup going on where it's almost it's like thunder but it was supposed to be like the train going overhead and it's like basically thunder crashing every time he stabs the music is really loud and stuff and there even like one of the lights just randomly exploded and it was just like crazy and over the top but it was a great scene because it was the riddler actually killing someone and obviously he's still edward enigma not really the riddler but after he stabbed him, you know, that first time, like, the second time was still a mistake because it was kind of like the guy tried to punch him and he was just holding the knife forward. But after that second time, he just kept stabbing him until he was dead. And I don't know where things are going to go from there. I don't know how quickly they're going to advance after this. But that was definitely a huge, huge step towards him becoming the Riddler. And it was still might take a very long time, you know, especially with this series, they aren't just going to jump and it's like, here's just everybody who's, you know, the characters we know. But it was really awesome. I thought it was a great moment for his character. Um, I don't know how things are going to play out. I know in the trailer, one of the things was he ends up talk talking to Miss Kringle. And I assume that, um, like, obviously he escapes because they aren't going to end up arresting him. But I assume that they someone found his body and that's in the newspaper or something and she reads it and it's like, you know, you don't know anything about him being dead or something like that. And obviously he's going to hide that and say he doesn't. But 
it should be exciting. I don't know where they're going to take things from here. He might, um, it might kind of go back to square one because she might assume that it was him that kind of killed the cop or something. But at the same time, it's, you know, the guy who's barely able to admit that he likes someone. So it'll kind of be like, it could be him, but at the same time, it's him. So he might be fine. I'm sure he will be because obviously he's going to be, you know, become the Riddler. But I thought that was crazy. I didn't expect it for this episode. I'm glad they did it. I didn't think it was going to happen at all uh, this season. I figured they'd save that for maybe season two. Um, it would be kind of a stretch for season three, but I figured they'd wait until like season two before he started really becoming the Riddler. But it was kind of awesome. It was the first step, and it still could be, you know, it will, uh, like I said, obviously be way down the line. And this could just be the first time it happened, and then afterwards, you know, maybe in season two, we start to see him act a little bit differently, like his riddles become a little bit darker, or his answers become a bit darker, where um, one great example I have is from the Arkham games, and it was like a simple riddle that's like, you know, what starts on all fours, um, then goes to two legs, or starts on four legs, goes to two legs, and then goes to three, and it was supposed to be like, it's people because like you're a baby, so you use, you know, your arms and your legs. And then you're older, you just use your legs, and then when you get really old, you have a cane, so that counts as the third leg. But he said something totally different. It was like, I think he said like a baby after you, um, it was like something after you cut his arms or cut his leg off or something like that, and then you have three legs. And it was just like, you know, a crazy answer about mutilating someone and chopping their limb off, and it's like, you know, that's the answer to my crazy riddle. So we might start seeing that where his answers aren't, you know, nice stuff like love and, you know, things like that. They end up becoming really dark answers. So this could just be the first step, but it was definitely a great step, even if it's not, you know, the first giant step or anything, which it can't not be because he killed somebody. But it, it was definitely a crazy moment in the episode. I, I definitely loved it. And him just saying, oh, dear, like 10 times, it's going to mess with, it's going to mess with his mind and it's going to change him. As a character, we'll get to see how he reacts to certain characters, especially Miss Kringle, because obviously that's why that happened, and he still cares about her, and she's going to have her suspicions about him. And who knows if that ends up with him, maybe, you know, a season from now, two seasons, he ends up having to kill her, because she does find out that he's the one who did it or something. But that's like, you know, way down the line, huge speculation, obviously. But it was still a great moment, um, along with, Penguin having to deal with Maroni kind of messing with his mom and telling him telling her every little secret about Penguin and then like the main story with the ogre kind of continuing with part two we get to see um he kind of goes after Barbara who's um I guess she never left town I kind of always forget what the heck she's doing she just shows up in episodes and then it's like that's what she's doing in this episode but you know he ends up finding her and he it, the interesting thing is how he even knows he's being investigated because no one, I mean, unless that random woman at the bar from the last episode told him, like, hey, these cops were looking for you and this is what they look like, how would he even know? Because they didn't really go into things like maybe there's someone inside the GCPD that's telling him about cops. It's just, like, he randomly finds out that it's this cop or that cop. Like, how would he even have remotely known that you know, it was Jim if someone else, you know, hadn't told him beforehand. And they still really didn't get into that. So I feel like they'll have to in the next episode. Otherwise, it's like, you know, if nothing's happening, like nothing's happening to him or, you know, someone at a random bar is and like, hey, cops came looking for you. He just wouldn't know that. So I thought it was kind of weird that he was randomly just outside the police station and it's like, Oh, he already knows it's Jim. And that was in, like, the beginning of the episode. He was already taking pictures of him and getting info. And, obviously, that's how um, he ended up finding Barbara. And that was before he even took the picture. So he knew um, who Barbara was because of the picture with Jim. And, you know, maybe it was because he was actually told by the commissioner in some sense. I mean, that's the whole reason Jim got the case to begin with. So they, you know, he would basically get scared off. But I thought it was kind of weird. He just knew all this information. They didn't even go into the possibility in this episode. And they might, you know, like I said, they might do it in the next episode. So I don't want to say, like, you know, it's bad writing, this and that. They probably just didn't touch on it because there was a lot of stuff happening in this episode. They were getting all sorts of random info. Like, 
this is who he is. Um, they got like, the fact that he actually had plastic surgery, so they don't know what he looks like. He's still like a huge mystery, which I actually thought was kind of cool. It's like they did so much in this episode for the case, and it's like we found out where he lives. We found out this woman is actually dead and not his mother. She's been dead for years. He killed her because um, he wanted her to be his mother, and then at the end she kind of just laughed in his face. So he killed her. His father covered it up so he could keep getting money scratched his face out of all the pictures so they don't know what he looked like they have like a little drawing but you know even after all that all that you know all that information is like we have both old names no current name no real current picture so we don't know what he looks like and i guess they do now because of selena at the end of the episode but you know i mean all they can really do is put that crappy little drawing um up on the news which i thought was funny that selena said that because when i first saw it, that's what i thought too like that's a funny looking picture it's not i was thinking like oh it's going to be detailed and stuff because it was like you know the plastic surgeon drew it and i was like that's a funny simple little picture like you know i can you know i can't even draw that, that well but i thought it was kind of funny and then she looks at it like that's a pretty crappy drawing so you know, I actually thought it was a great way to end, you know, kind of part two of this sort of ogre um, storyline. It's weird that that's the name for the character. I think ogre, I think actual ogres, but um, I guess it kind of fits when we see the picture in this episode. Ironically, that they just happen to call him the ogre, and then it's like, oh, he, you know, before the plastic surgery, this is what he looked like. Not like an ogre, but just a messed up face. And I just think it was really well done. I thought it was pretty cool. Kind of how they... Um, I like how they tied certain storylines together with the Selena stuff and how she was obviously with Barbara and she saw Barbara um, leaving the gala. And it just kind of tied into the case when uh, Jim went to try to basically save her and see if she was okay. So I thought that was a nice little way to tie things in. And we got, you know, the Bruce and Selena storyline where they get the little imprint of the key. So they're going to try to break into um, Wayne tech i believe i don't know if it's called yeah i think it's just wayne industries at this point but um they're gonna try to break in there i don't know how the heck that's gonna work out like his safe i would assume isn't gonna be at his house so i still have no idea how they plan on getting to this safe with this um uh, with the key they're gonna end up making but it should be entertaining it should be something to watch them go like crazy stealth mode and try to sneak into any building even if it's at his house it'll be interesting to watch that kind of go downward Bruce and Selena are working together trying to really get all these secrets and expose, you know, everything that's happening and try to stop people from killing them and expose the people who are trying to kill them. So I think we still got some interesting things, you know, coming ahead. We have two episodes left, so next week is going to be the end of the Ogre, you know, sort of trilogy, I guess. Um, odds are they're going to save Barbara. Everything's going to work out fine. And... You know, after that, it's going to be the season finale, which I think is going to be really interesting. And one really big thing that, you know, happened or didn't happen, depending on how you look at it, is uh, Fish Mooney's storyline. Every episode, she's been in it until this episode. Like, ever since she left, there's always been like, here's what happened to Fish Mooney. Here's this, you know, big thing that happened. And after she's escaped, it's kind of like she's just, you know, in this helicopter, maybe... Um, maybe she won't even be in the next episode either, and that would be very interesting if they did that, and they kind of went through a couple of days, and then the season finale happens, and say, um, and I think I thought of this before, like, if Penguin did kill Moroni, and then Fish comes back, and she takes over his side of things, maybe that could actually end up happening if they play it that way, because, you know, she was gone, everyone thinks she's, you know, dead, and... You know, she comes back in right after Maroney gets killed and then she takes over and it's like, well, you know, look at this. And she takes over for Maroney and then her his people follow her because she wants to take out, you know, Penguin and Falcone still. And that's what they all want to do too because obviously they, you know, got their boss killed. Or at least, you know, they'll assume Falcone knew about it and everything. And, you know, we still don't really know how that'll play out even if it does happen. Like, how is Falcone going to feel? Because... They all kind of work together. They might all be rivals, but Maroni controls the liquor and stuff like that, and Falcone controls other things, and they all kind of work together. So when you kind of break that apart, who knows what's going to take place. But I'm definitely excited for these last two episodes. I think um, after the Ogre thing, there's going to be a lot for them to kind of do with 
sort of the police storyline. So I'm very curious as to what's going to happen there. And obviously they already showed that um, Jim is kind of losing it in the next episode. He's like holding a gun on Penguin and he points it at Butch. I think it was Butch. It might have been um, the other guard that Penguin has. But I'm definitely excited, of course. I want to know what you guys thought about this episode. So please comment below. Let me know your favorite parts, your least favorite parts. And, of course, I want to know uh, what was your favorite storyline in this episode. And also, um, I think the biggest, you know, the two craziest moments. What do you guys think of, I guess, Nigma finally making his first kill as well as... Um, the Penguin's mother learning everything about him, like learning his true identity, because these are obviously two huge Batman villains, and Penguin is already, from like the very beginning of the series, he was already kind of doing his thing, and you know, Riddler is kind of, you know, in the series, he's one of the good guys, and it's so funny watching that and knowing where he's going to end up, so this was that first, you know, kind of branching point where he's been the good guy, and now he's kind of turning into, you know, the Riddler that we know, so... I definitely want to know what you guys thought about those two really crazy moments, so please comment below, let me know, and thanks for watching.